Okay, this is what this this is. <laughs> this is absolutely not correct. Absolutely. If there was like a definitive one that is not correct, this is the one. I don't understand how the people in the Souls community, and in my community as well, be mad at my takes, and this is what they think. Ain't no way in... I mean, they probably haven't played the game in a long time. Okay, so basically, I hosted this tournament to try and figure out what was the best weapon between, like, you know, almost every single weapon in the game. I picked, like, the best ones that I consider the best ones in every single category. Had them fight each other, and everyone was voting to try and determine what the best weapon was. Um, so let's go start off with where I started with the best dagger, to which the community um, voted, or part one of the daggers, voted the black knife for 79%, and then Glintstone Chris got 10%. This is absolutely not true. The Glenstone Chris is way better than the Black Knife. Uh, Black Knife is really good, but ain't no way is it the Glenstone Chris. Glenstone Chris just does way more damage. Absolutely just melts. I have a video on the Glenstone Chris as well. You can go check that out. And talk about like the best weapons in every single weapon class, which I also made a video about. Um, part two, the Reduvia one. That's fair, I guess. Not too mad at the Reduvia. Honestly, I actually prefer the Great Knife with Blood Blade over the Reduvia because I actually can just do more damage. But if you're like at higher levels, the Reduvia is perfectly fine. Mystery Cord was probably going to be your second option because with like um, posture breaking builds, not posture breaking builds. Actually, yeah, with repost builds, Mystery Cord is going to be your best option. So that's not too bad. Lord Swan Straight Sword won the best Straight Sword of the first part. Over the Nobles, I guess it's fine. Sword of St. Trina is not too bad, yeah. It's really balanced. Lord Swan just gets like insane um, damage. And it gets a 110 crit multiplier as well, which is kind of cool. Sword of Nine Flame, this is where I disagree. <laughs> This is where I disagree. So the Sword of Nine Flame does actually like work very well with Intelligence and Faith builds, but the Ash War is very expensive. Um, it's not like the quickest animation in the world, like, and the damage itself is pretty like something less than the uh, the Glenstone Chris can actually do more damage than it as well. I think the Regalia is the best option here. Regalia just like shreds. It only consumes like 15 FP and it can do like way more damage. Yes, it's only like melee range, but it still is really, really solid. Um, best greatsword, yeah, Death Poker, it's not even close. Not even close. Yeah, that one just sweeps. That does way too much damage. Um, best greatsword, Darkman greatsword, yeah, that's fair. Not too mad about that one, um, Marius Execution Sword. Probably could have got more votes, but I think the Darkman greatsword is like the best weapon in the entire game. Um, that, that one in the Blastomus Blade, one, two. And then the Blastomus Blade ended up getting that one. I'm surprised that the Ordovis' greatsword got less than the Knight's or the Banished Knight's greatsword, which is very interesting. Because the Ordovis is like a top 15 open in this game. Like it actually just destroys enemies. The poise break damage, regular damage, it's incredible. So I'm surprised that this one actually got that low. Um, but yeah, I was definitely not going to win against the Blastomus Blade. Definitely not going to win. Um, this one's actually pretty balanced. Um, I probably would have actually went with the Rowan's Greatsword. Now that I'm thinking about it. Um, I literally just got done. We just got done doing the Malika's Black Blade Ashivore only run. Um, I can do decent damage. Very long animation, 40 FP. Our Ruins Greatsword gets a unique charged heavy attack. And the projectiles are very reminiscent of the Blasphemous Blade, but obviously I'm not going to do that same, like, you know, um, health regen stuff. They're pretty close. I probably would prefer the Ruins Greatsword over the Malakas, though. Um, best Colossal Sword, Greatsword, yeah, that one's, yeah. That's fair. It has, like, the most range, has the most damage. You can infuse it. You can put, like, Giant's Hunt, Lion's Claw into it. It's really good. Uh, God Slayer's Greatsword probably is, like, your close second, though. Because the Ash War is really good and it has like one of the best light attack combos in the entire game. I did the Royal. The Royal Greatsword is not too bad. It's just I wish that it actually had passive frost build up on the weapon itself. Or like after you use the Ash of War, it buffed your weapon with frost. Because you only get frost on the Ash of War and it doesn't even do that much frost build up. So it's very rare that you actually do proc frost on a lot of bosses. Um, best Thrusting Sword, Clean Rot Sword. I would have went with the S Dock because it has like the best moveset. But the Clean Rot Knight Sword does get like, I think it has the best range and the most damage. So. That's fair, I guess. All the thrusting swords are kind of just mid, honestly. Um, Frozen Needle actually got second. The heavy attacks are actually pretty decent, because it's like a projectile. And obviously it does proc frost at a distance, which obviously is very nice, but the damage itself. And you only get stuck with Impaling Thrust, which is a decent weapon skill, but the fact that it's not unique, and you can't infuse it, kind of unfortunate. Um, but the Ansper Rapier, yeah, this one definitely is going to win out. Um, Reduce Rapier and Nobles Estoc do have decent movesets. Um, Reduce Rapier is probably the better one, in my opinion, because it is pretty better for status effect builds. But Ansper Rapier, it's Scarlet Rod, and you can infuse it, which is very unique. So that is really cool, although it does have pretty bad range. 
But it still is the best one. Um, best heavy thrusting sword is the Bloody Hellas, yeah. That's fair. Bloody Hellas has like an insanely cheap Ashura that does a lot of damage. It gets Inherent Blade as well. Uh, Dragon King Crack Blade is really amazing. Um, does have like some weird hit detection issues. I actually just did a run where um, this used the Ashura only. Does really good poise, but like for the amount of FP, I think Bloody Hellas performs better because you get an Inherent Dodge. Actually, this boosts your neutral game by a whole bunch. But yeah, Bloody Hellas here, 100%. Godskin search. I probably would put the Godskin over the Dragon King Craig Blade, honestly. Honestly, I probably would have. Both are really good, though. I mean, all of these options are S tier. They're all S tier options for the heavy thrusting swords. Best curved sword? Yeah, Scavengers, yeah. Scavengers beats, yeah, by a mile. Uh, Magma Blade's not too bad, but the weapon skill isn't that unique, although it can shred a bunch of enemies, but Scavengers is just definitely the best one. Wing of Estelle, yeah. Beastmen's, oh, and Bandits in second. Bandits, because I think it has like the most range and the most damage as well, which is really cool. But Wing of Estelle just has like the best posture, break, posture breaking potential, and you get free projectile attacks. Yeah, Wing of Estelle is definitely the best curve sword. Beastman's not too bad as well, because that's definitely best paired with like a strength infusion, but I think that Bandits can out damage it still, despite actually having a unique jumping heavy attack. Um, Bloodhound Fang, yeah, this one's not even close. <laughs> this one's not even close. I actually would have went with the Omen Cleaver in second. I think the Beastman's just one. Oh, they're both 8%. I think the Omen Cleaver is like much better because it has like the better, it has a very similar move, but it has like twice as much range. And the damage difference is not even that much. Because Beastman can actually do more damage with a Strength Infusion, but like the range of the Omen Cleaver is like insane. Hence why I probably prefer it a lot more. Um, but yeah, Bloodhound Fang is definitely the best one. I have insane damage, insane Ash of War, literally can buff it and it gets Blade, like it, it gets everything. <laughs> it literally gets everything. Um, best Curve Sword, uh, honestly, this was where I disagree as well. I would actually go with the Magma Worm Scale Sword. This thing just does so much damage. Insane damage. It gets like a beast killing of both strength and faith. And it's going to shred enemies. A lava portion just does insane damage. And I think it doesn't even consume that much FP. I think it consumes like 15 FP for every single part. Whereas the Morgoth's Curse Sword, the entire combo consumes like 40 FP. So it's pretty expensive. And it can do bleed, which obviously is really cool. Um, but the Magma Worm Scale Sword, the Ashura just out damages it. Completely. Completely. Morgoth doesn't really do as much damage. Um, and the scalings are going to be better with this as well, because you get to have more faith, which means you can actually have spells as well. Whereas this one's probably more arcane, which if you're not going into much faith, you don't really get the options of spells. Hence why I prefer the Magma Worm Scale Sword. Best Katana. Yeah, Minvel can win, yeah. It's like literally unsheathed, but like it's Ashwar is just on crack, because where it's a projectile. It does consume more FP, but it's definitely worth it. That's fair. I probably wouldn't have the Hand of Millennia over the Uchi Katana. Although both are really good. They're both like high A tier or S tier options. Okay, this is what this, this is. <laughs> this is absolutely not correct. Absolutely. If there was like a definitive one that is not correct, this is the one. I don't understand how the people in the Souls community, and in my community as well, be mad at my takes, and this is what they think. Ain't no way in... I mean, they probably haven't played the game in a long time. But no, Rivers is not the best <laughs> katana. Definitely not better than the Nagakibo. I'd probably give it the second best. Actually, I'd probably put the Dragon Scale Blade like in the same tier as Rivers of Blood. But Nagakibo should be at like 95%. There is no way the Nagakibo did not make it out of the first round. I think the Nagakibo is the best katana in the entire game. Wholeheartedly, I do believe it. it. has absolutely insane range. Insane range. And you can like actually infuse it as well. Rivers of Blood got nerfed to the point where it's like mid. But Naga Keeper with Double Slash just outperforms it. You can put things like Unsheath, Sword Dance, Stormcaller as well. Every single one of those Ashes of War just will actually make it perform better than the Rivers of Blood. So yeah, this is absolutely not correct. Absolutely not correct. Um, Dragon Scale Blade is actually probably more in line because it actually can do Frost, which is pretty decent. It actually does decent damage. Um, I don't know. I think Rivers of Blood is probably easy to use because you can still L2 spam. But it actually consumes a lot of FP with Corpse Pylor. Whereas if you use Double Slash... On a Nagakiba, it's actually consume way less FP. It's like 30 amount of FP. But yeah, Nagakiba is just way better than Rivers of Blood. This is not true. Um, best Twin Blade Eleanor is, yeah, I agree as well. Eleanor's Ashawar is like insanely cheap, does so much damage, it can stagger, posture breaks really well, and it does like a dash back into safety attack as well. Um, so yeah, really cool. Godskin Pillar is probably your close second though. Um, Gargoyle's Twin Blade does get like the most damage, um, but it has like the least amount of range. But you can value a lot in Twin Blades, but they're all really good. These three options are really good. I probably like the regular Twin Blades sometimes with like the Blade builds with the Eleanor's um, Pole Blade because it actually has the least amount of um, dexterity requirement. You can just go all into Blade. 
Um, the axe. This is definitely the most balanced one, maybe because people don't really use axes. They just wanted to balance out <laughs> the pole itself. Um, the warped axe winning is probably the correct play. I feel like this is actually the correct ordering as well. Warped axe, Rose's axe is second. Rose's axe is pretty underrated. It's actually not that bad. It can do very decent damage. It probably still needs a buff in terms of hyper armor, I guess. Um, but it's still really good. Probably like track, actually not hyper armor, probably tracking. <laughs> Definitely tracking with the stuff, but your warped axe has like an insane moveset. Um, Highland axe, it's probably only good to boost your, like those raw attacks. Outside of that, it's kind of average. River blade's probably the better option, but Highland axe is going to use it more because of those ashes of war. That's when you hit 25k subs. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, best axe part to the Stormhawk axe. I personally, personally, the Stormhawk axe by itself, it's really good, but Stormcaller as a weapon skill already exists. And the Stormcaller Ash of War can just be better because you can put that on larger weapons that just do more damage and put them alongside things like Bleed, and they can literally outperform the Stormhawk Axe. Because Stormcaller just is pretty much the exact same thing um, in terms of damage, but if you put it on a larger weapon, it's going to actually outperform Stormcaller or Stormhawk Axe. It does actually boost your weapon by like 120 lightning damage, but the thing is, it only lasts like 30 seconds or some shit like that. Where something like the Dragon Scale Blade, right? Dragon Scale Blade has the same type of weapon skill that boosts the weapon with lightning damage, but it boosts it with 160 lightning damage for like 45 seconds, and it adds frost. So, the weapon skill of the Dragon Scale Blade actually boosts it with more damage, frostbite, and it lasts longer. Whereas the Stormhawk Axe boosts it for only 120 lightning damage for like a little bit of time. So, being that the skill itself is not even that unique, I probably would have actually went with the Iron Cleaver because it has the better light attack combo. Or the Jawbone Axe, because it's the only axe that actually gets strike damage. Which is definitely what the axes are lacking, and hence the why I actually prefer Hammer is probably a lot more. It's because of the strike damage and the more poise damage. So that's actually probably even the better option. And the Hand Axe has like a very fast moveset. So honestly, I would actually prefer all of these other three options over the Stormhawk Axe. Because if I actually wanted to use something like Stormcaller, I will just use the Stormcaller Ash of War. So all these three things actually have more uses because they have much more variety at play than the Stormhawk Axe, so. There is that. Those are my opinions. Best Great Axe Executions, yeah, that's correct. That is correct. Um, it gets the most range, gets the most damage. Gets like 115 crit multiplier as well. It's insane. Amazing. Um, Butchering Knife in second, it's not too bad, but like it's, the Great Stars is like the exact same thing, but it's better because they both get like health regen, but the Great Stars, I think it gets like more damage. I think it gets more range and it gets inherent to bleed. So yeah. Just going to be the better option. And it's a, a, a great hammer compared to a great axe. So great hammers are going to get strike damage and more poise damage as well. So I don't really care much for the butchering knife. Um, best great axe, the Rusted Anchor, yeah. Rusted Anchor is definitely the best one here. 100%. Um, great Omen Killer Cleaver is definitely second. I don't know why it's even so close to the Crescent Moon Axe. If this was PvP, then maybe. Um, but in PvE, I think great Omen Killer Cleaver is amazing because you have good Ash of War options with the... A great axe, and this gets inherent bleed, which obviously is pretty unique. Um, but the rest of the is the best one because piercing damage is just insane. It just like out damages like everything in the entire game because of the piercing damage. Really good stuff. Um, best hammer, the ringed finger over the stone club. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. The ringed finger is pretty good. I think I prefer it more in PvP. I remember doing an entire playthrough with the ringed finger in PvE. I'm um, just using the Ash of War alone, and actually is pretty decent. Can stagger. Very nicely, can posture break very quickly, but the stone club is built different. The light attack combos are insanely fast, and the damage itself for the stone club is probably better than everything else here. So yeah, stone club should definitely be winning by a mile, one hundred percent. Um, best hammer. When this list first came out, I actually did not agree with this at all. But after doing a Marika's hammer Ashivor only run, I probably do agree with this. It actually is really good. I thought I actually did pure holy damage, but um, it actually does mostly physical. Um, I'm not sure if I would put it over the Morning Star because the Morning Star does get a unique move set to where like, it does poking attacks with its running heavy and its rolling attack as well. But Marika's Hammer weapon does look cool. Also, I get this is fine. This is fine, but I think Morning Star is definitely extremely underrated though. Who cares about the rest? Nox Flying Hammer is not too bad, but it's not as good as these two. Um, the Bastard Stars winning, yeah, that's like their only good flail. <laughs> it's their only good flail because the Ash of War is very similar to the Wing of Estelle. It works slightly different to where like it hits like a, a more of a radius, has like a 360 degree radius. And it probably does more damage, but it's not as quick as a cast of the Wing of Estelle. 
It's not too bad though, but like, you know, it doesn't really get bleed. Um, family Heads is probably the second best one. Family Heads, I did an, uh, an entire playthrough with the Ashen War of the Family Heads, Familiar Rankle, and actually it's pretty decent. It actually staggers pretty nicely, it goes pretty far, has decent tracking. Um, unfortunately, it only gets a descaling in intelligence, but I think the Family Heads is definitely the second best. Uh, the other ones, I don't care for any of the other flails that you can be infused because Spinning Chain is not an equipable weapon skill. I don't know why Spinning Chain is not an Ashen War. Really annoying. Uh, but yeah, these two are definitely the best flails, purely because of their weapon skills. If you want to infuse something like the flail, just infuse a hammer. It's literally just going to be better. <laughs> just going to be better because those charging heavy attacks are just better. Um, best great hammer is the great stars. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And this out of these ones, yeah. Um, the brick hammer came in seconds. Does decent damage, but like the range of the brick hammer is not that great. Whereas the great stars, yeah. It's just insane. You get health regen on every single hit. And you get bleed. It's incredible. Um, Beast Claw, great hammer. It's okay, but there's plenty of things that have like better like projectile ashes that just work nicer, I guess. Um, and it's split holy damage, which is cringe. Um, Envy's Longhorn, the only good pure holy weapon in the game because it just shreds enemies. So yeah, Envy's Longhorn des definitely deserves to win. Um, great Mace Pickaxe. I probably would put the Pickaxe over the Great Mace. Maybe, because the pickaxe actually has more utility because you can power stance it with other um, great axes, which is unique. But I'm not mad at the great, great mace getting higher. Cranial Vessel Candle Stand is decent. Like, the Ashwar can melt the follow-up projectile parts that spew out those, like, lava things. That does not need to exist. If it has had the explosion and it ended the Ashwar, it'd honestly be, like, an S-tier option. But, like, those little fireballs that it keeps spitting out, you just stay still for, like, forever and you're just gonna get hit a bunch. Which is very annoying because like those little projectiles that fall out of it are just like they they miss half the time and they barely do any damage as well. So it's really annoying. Um Best Colossal Weapon, Giant's Crusher, yeah, I agree. I agree, Falling Star Beast Jaw. It did get nerfed pretty heavily, but it's still decent though. To where it's probably still second. Axe of Godfrey, it's okay. It's okay. It can be okay. It doesn't have like a broken Ash War like some of the other stuff in this game. It's like a pretty solid strength weapon. I wish it had like an A scaling or an S scaling in strength. That would be really cool. But yeah, Giant Crush is definitely the best because it has like the most damage in the game. Unless you use like the Rusted Anchor, I guess. If you get like perfect poise damage or piercing damage, but... Um, best Colossal Weapon? I disagree with this. I put the Prelates Inferno Cruiser at the bottom, honestly. <laughs> Actually, I probably put it third. Probably put the Great Club at the bottom. I think the Geezer's Will and the Watchdog stuff are better. The Geezer's Will is just absolutely insane. Those one... Ha um, one-handed charging heavy attacks do so much damage. Insane damage. They can just like melt enemies. And it does like really good blood loss build up as well. Paired alongside the Axe Talisman, Millicent Prosthesis, the Thorny End Cracked and uh, Spiked Cracked tier. Bro, it can just destroy everything in the fucking game. It's really good. Um, the Ashura is kind of bugged to where it doesn't really work against larger bosses because like the frame rate issues will come into place. And then it will just do like a bunch less damage. But now Geese as well is way better than the Prelates and Phrenic Razier. And Watchdog stuff is pretty decent. Unfortunately, it doesn't get an intelligence scaling to where it doesn't actually... The Ashwar doesn't scale off any stat. But the Ashwar does, like, really good damage. It's a really solid projectile that you can spam over and over again. Um, Prelates and Phrenic Razier. I feel like that the Giant Crusher just directly outclasses it because it has the better heavy attack. Because it, it, it does more damage, so... It doesn't really have much of a point, although it does look cool, I guess. But the, these two weapons are definitely better. A Great Club is not too bad. I wish it could actually just infuse it, though. Because I don't really care much for Golden Land. Not too big of a fan. Um, best spear, death ritual spear, 100%. 100%. This thing is literally what the Falling Star Beast used to be like. In terms of how much like damage it can do. How much it can stagger. It's pretty cheap. It does like almost everything that you want it to do. And it gets like a unique heavy attack as well. Which is cool. Pretty decent stuff. But yeah, it's extremely high damaging. Extremely high damaging. Um, best spear, yeah, Boulder Grand Sex, yeah. Yep. It just cheeses the entire game. It's like incredibly like easy to use. It's like a fucking sniper. You can hit it. The stand at the back of the map and it start picking things up at a distance. Very easy. I crossed on Ganata in second. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. It gets like a pretty decent light attack combo. It gets bleed. Uh, Clean Rod Spirit actually kind of underrated. Not too bad. It is pure holy damage. Definitely shouldn't win on this list, but is it still a decent pick though. Probably give it like a high A tier. Uh, the best great spear. Yeah, the Serpent Hunter wins. Yeah. That's fair. Um, like, no requirements. Gets, like, a very good strength scaling. 
has like the best moveset like in the entire game. Like there has the crouching attacks that poke. You have a very solid like jumping heavy attack. You have the horizontal swipes with the heavy attacks themselves. So yeah. Um, that combined with his good damage, the Asher Ward doesn't really, don't really care about it, but the rest of the whole moveset is like desolate, like one of the best in the game. I probably would've put the Lance over the Servant Hunter though, because the Lance is like the only great speed that can be infused. Actually, the Lance over the Tree Speed, not the Servant Hunter. Uh, the Lance actually has, yeah, you can infuse this. You can pair it with things like Phantom Slash or um, Spectral Lance as well. Really good pairings. Tree Spear is pretty decent. Like at the moment it's broken because of Sacred Order, but Sacred Order can be put onto any weapon. Um, does have a pretty decent heavy attack there, which is kind of cool. But I definitely prefer these two more. Um, yeah, Mog ones, yeah, definitely the best. I don't know how the fuck the Vikes beat Silurius Tree in a PvE list. This is a PvE list? What the fuck are the people using the Vikes War Spear in PvE? Don't understand that. Silurius Tree definitely clears Vikes War Spear. 100%. It's not even close. Silurius Tree actually works scales mainly of strength as well. So you could be doing mainly physical damage, not even holy damage. But yeah, Silurius Tree is actually insane. Because you can fully charge it, pair it with the God Freeze icon, and just melt enemies. And it goes through enemies as well. But yeah, Mog 1 Sacred Spear is definitely the best one, though. The Blade is insane. Knight Rider's Glaive. Yes. 100% Knight Rider's Glaive is the correct play. Um, has, like, some of the best range. It gets slash damage as well, which is unique to Halberds. You do get more damage on horseback. I think it's, like, 120 motion value on horseback. Um, and what else? It does the most damage. True. Has, like, an S scaling strength. It's insane. Really good stuff. Um, the Golden Halberd coming second? Absolutely not. <laughs> I think the Golden Halberd is overrated as fuck. It has like really good damage, but like it has average range. It gets the basic generic Halberd moveset, so you don't really benefit much. And you get Golden Bowels in Ash of War. Like it's good early game because you can pick it up right at the beginning of the game. It's great, but like the Banished Knight Halberd has the better moveset. You can infuse it. Only good thing about the Golden Halberd is like it's decent total overall damage. You can't buff it though. Like it's just, yeah. It's average at best, honestly. I don't honestly I'd even prefer the Vulgar Militia Sword because it gets bleed, so <laughs> even that's the better option than the Golden Halberd. I guess it's only like really popular because you get it like off the tree sentinel, so a lot of people have it. But I think that every one of these halberds are just better. Every one of these halberds. And it's like pure holy damage, so against most of the bosses, it's actually gonna be doing less damage than some of these other ones. So yeah. But it still gets decent damage though. Even with the holy. Um, best halberd, Guardian Sword Spear, yeah, I agree. Um, I agree, yeah. Unique light attack combo, it gets like an S scaling or an A scaling in dexterity. I think it gets like the highest base damage, or some of the highest base damage out of all the other halberds in the game. Which is really cool. Uh, Dragon Halberd in second, yeah, I agree with that one too. It just shreds enemies. Really good light attack combo. Um, because it gets those poking attacks. The Ash of War just shreds and actually does bu um, boost your damage, or buffs your weapon with like 160 lightning. And it adds frost as well. And obviously frost has a very solid status effect. A Commander Standard is decent because it also gets the same poking attacks and it has the most range out of all the other Halberds. And the Asher Ward does actually boost your damage, which is nice, I guess. But yeah, definitely this, this is the correct ordering. Uh, Ribble Crescent Halberd is probably the best one in PvP. <laughs> probably. Best Reaper. Honestly, anyone winning is actually perfectly fine. All the, all the Scythes are really good in PvE. I probably would go with the Grave Scythe as well because it actually gets like the best damage and it looks the coolest. You do get like a little bit of boost of vitality, which doesn't really mean anything, but yeah, the damage and the way that it looks. Definitely S tier. Um, but yeah, Halo Scythe is really solid, really good projectiles. You can spam them over and over again, has decent range, staggers very nicely. Wing Scythe is also a very solid early game option because you can just get it like at the Weeping Peninsula, I think it is. And the Ash Warrior does stagger very well. Has decent range and it is pretty cheap. And the Scythe has a very unique charge heavy attack to where it's pretty decent with status effect builds and it already does bleed, so... Is a good pairing there. So I, all of these are actually just as good as one another. But I think the Grave Scythe winning is definitely the correct play. And the best whip. Wait, the Ermi came last? How did the Ermi get lost? How is the Magma Whip Candlestick and the Giant's Red Braid better than the Ermi? The Thorned Whip or Hoslo's Petal Whip, that's fine, I guess. Like, it's a Blade Whip. Like, whips in themselves just suck ass. Hmm. How did the Urmi? <laughs> Urmi gets like slash damage for one, which is actually kind of unique. And it gets like an S scaling in sh dexterity. And those heavy attacks, like turn them into poking attacks, which means piercing damage. So yeah, Ur I think Urmi is the best one one handed and two handed. But if you power stancing, then I'd definitely go with the blade whips because blade power stancing whips are actually kind of cool. 
Um, the move set's one-handed. I don't really care for the whips outside of the Urumi. But power dancing, you just got to spam jumping attacks or running attacks. And with the bleed whips, are actually kind of decent. Um, best fist weapon, spy, um, star fist. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Uh, Cyber Fighter in seconds. I actually like the Cyber Fighter um, more than the Coded Sword if you're actually comparing weapon to weapon. But I probably use the Coded Sword more because you can actually just use that one-handed and actually have your seal on your offhand. And if you're actually going to use one of these weapons, it's probably because you're going with like a pure caster build anyway. And you just want to have like an option just to do damage with sometimes as a melee. Um, but comparing weapon to weapon, I think Cyber Fighter is actually better than the Coded Sword because Fist Weapons are very solid and it actually gets a decent moveset as well. It actually gets the same moveset as the Katar. But yeah, Star Fist is insane. Gets like the most damage. Those charge heavy attacks come out so fast. They can posture break very quickly. And this thing gets bleed. So it's pretty much exactly like the Iron Ball, but it gets bleed and more damage. Uh, Spike Kessels is really cool as well. I just prefer the Star Fist because its heavy attacks come out way faster. Um, yeah, the Kessels actually that might do like a bit more poise damage with its full combo. But like Star Fist is like way faster. <laughs> it's built different. Built different. Built different. Uh, best Claw. Um, Venomous Fang. I think the Venomous Fang is better. Because Deadly Poison and can be infused is really cool. And I think the Venomous Fang gets the highest damage potential out of all of the other ones. Although it does have like, the least amount of range. It doesn't get a 110 crit multiplier. Which is unfortunate, but I think the Venomous Fang is still the best one. I mean, all the Claws are really good. Uh, Bloodhound Claws are getting second is probably the correct play as well. Because it does hit around shields, albeit there's not many shielded enemies. Um, and it's your best strength scaling claw as well. But that's all of them. Um, these are the ones I actually won out of every single class, which is interesting. And then we did a second part to actually figure out which one the best one is. People voted for the Black Knife of the Reduvio, which I agree with, I guess. I still think that Glintstone Chris is the best dagger, but that's fair. Um, Reduvia, I honestly prefer like Blood Blade with a Great Knife, but that's fine. Um, best Straight Sword, I didn't think the Sword of Nine Flame should have even been on this list. <laughs> the Regalia is the best Straight Sword, but Sword of Nine Flame, I guess it's fine. It's okay, it's okay. I probably would have went the Lord's Drawn Straight Sword. I would have went Lord's Ones. Um, best Great Sword, I would have went with the Darkwing Great Sword, but the Blastoise Blade winning, it's fine. Like, Darkwing Great Sword and the Blastoise Blade are the two best weapons in the game. 100%. Like, it's not even close. Like, they're in their own separate tier, both of these things. So, Blastoise Blade winning, I don't really care. That's fine. I just personally would win the Darkwing Greatsword. I think Blastoise Blade probably, like, better for casuals because they get that health regen. Um, but Darkwing Greatsword could have, like, better damage potential. Um, the regular Greatsword of Amalekus Black Blade, I agree. Good damage, good range. And Spirapia, I agree as well. I agree. Although, Clean Rot Knight has decent damage, but... The Scarlet Rod's always really cool. Um, Wing of Estelle, I agree as well. Um, I was surprised I actually should have been way more because the Wing of Estelle poise damage is actually insane. And you get free projectile heavy attacks, which is also insane. And with a Coast Sword, when you fully charge it, it does a double swipe. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, Wing of Estelle is like insane. Um, Bloodhound Fang, I agree. That thing is just cracked. You get to buff it, it gets Blade. You get a very cheap Ash War that does insane damage. Yeah. Um, I'm honestly surprised that Morgoth even got 30%. Because Morgoth is like the third best or fourth best curve um, great sword. Honestly, I prefer the Dismounter and the Magmorum Scale Sword over the Morgoth's curse sword. But yeah, Bloodhound definitely should win. <sighs> the Rurus of Blood should never even been here. It should have been the Nagakiba. And honestly, I think the Nagakiba is better than the Moonveil. But the Moonveil winning, I'm not too mad about. It's still really good. I'm um, definitely better than the Rivers of Blood. 100%. Stormwalk Axe should not have won. Absolutely not. Warped Axe is a lot better. <laughs> as I was saying before about the Stormwalk Axe. It's Ash War is pretty much the exact same thing as Stormcaller. Um, Rusted Anchor winning over the Executioner's Great Axe. I agree. This is actually a decent split as well. Because I don't think it's like that much better. But, you know, I definitely think it's the best option. Because there's piercing damage. Makes it be built a different. Maricus Hammer is definitely better than the Ringed Finger. Although, I think the Stone Club is probably the best overall hammer. Because... That shit's built different because the fast light attack combos. Because hammer light attack combos are kind of trash. But the stone club just makes it actually decent. And actually gets like the most damage as well. Um, great stars over the Envoy's Longhorn. I personally would have went with Envoy's Longhorn. Because that one just like destroys everything in the fucking game. That just like melts everything re very quickly. But great stars winning I'm not too mad about. That's fine. You going out smelly? All good man. Thanks for stopping by. Don't have to worry about that. Giant Crusher winning. Yep, that's fair. It's pretty much just the better version. 
You just do more damage and you get the better move set, so. Might as well. Bolt of Grand Sex winning, yeah, Bolt of Grand Sex just cheeses the entire game. It's a sniper. That just fucking melts. Definitely a casual weapon. <laughs> um, Death Road is supposed to be really good, but definitely not as good as Bolt of Grand Sex. Mugwin, Sacred Spear winning, yep, 100%, that's not even close. Knight Rider's Glaive, I agree as well. It gets, like, more damage, and I think it gets more range. Actually, I think it's very similar range. Actually, I'm not too sure now. <laughs> and it gets slash damage, which is arguably better than standard damage. Um, okay, now this is round three. Blasphemous Blade beating out the Greatsword, Sword of Night and Flame. And the Black Knife, yeah, as I was saying, these two should not have even been here. I'm surprised the Greatsword didn't get more. But yeah, Blasphemous Blade is... Yeah, I guess people just know better. <laughs> I guess people just know better. Bloodhound Fang winning, yes. Surprised the Wing of Estelle didn't get more, but yeah. Bloodhound Fang is definitely the best one. Then Moonvel getting above the Eleanor's Paul Blade and the Rusted Anchor? No, I would have went with the Rusted Anchor here. I think the Eleanor's and the Rusted Anchor is actually a better option than Moonvel. Although Moonvel is still really good. Actually, probably Moonvel Eleanor is very similar. Um, but Rusted Anchor, I think, is the best one on this list. It shit just does so much damage. And Great Axes have been buffed plenty of times to where they have very solid movesets now. Um, Giant Crusher over these, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Bastard Stars, no. America's Hammer, no. Great Stars is really, like, your second closest one, but I think Giant Crusher just... It just does more damage. That shit can just, like, cheese so many different enemies with, like, a charged heavy attack build. But if Great Stars won, I wouldn't have been too mad. Um, Bolt of Grand Sex winning on this list. Oh, Star Fist. Oh, fuck, I would have loved to go for the Star Fist here, but I think the Bolt of Grand Sex is just... Built different. Built different. It just makes the game so easy. Whereas Star Fist, you, you at least have to go like, up close and personal. <laughs> I think Star Fist has a better ceiling than the Bolt of Grand Sex. But you put the Bolt of Grand Sex on like even like a bad player, and they can make him seem good, so... Which there been a seed in the votes option? Uninformed as heck opinion polluting the votes. What do you mean? I don't know what that means. Anyway. Mogwin Sacred Spear over the Night Riders Glaive and Grace Yeah, Mogwin Sacred Spear is like top five weapon in this game. That's a meme. Blasphemous Blade of a Giant Crusher. Yep. I agree. Blasphemous Blade for a top two weapon in this game. It should definitely win this list. Um, Mogwin Sacred Spear over the Bolt of Grand Sax. That, honestly, I'm not too mad at. I think the Bolt of Grand Sax is actually, like, easier for a casual player. As I was saying before, you can just put it in the hands of even, like, a bad player. And then they can go through the game perfectly fine. Mogwin Sacred Spear, kind of the same thing. You have to be get at least walk a bit closer. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They're both really good. I'm not too mad. I probably would have went the Bolt of Grand Sax, but Mogwin Sacred Spear is honestly just as good. Um, Bloodhound Fang is 100% better than the Moonvale. I'm surprised this was even that close. They actually both had the same splits. 47 53. 47 and 53. I'm surprised the Moonvale even got that many votes. The Bloodhound Fang should have swept 100%. Way better damage, better Ash War, gets bleed, can get buffed. Yeah, the Naga Keeper is <laughs> definitely better than the Moonvale. 100%. And then the final match, the Blasphemous Blade ended up winning. That's fair, and then they voted for the Bloodhound Fang to get the second best weapon, and the Mogwin Sacred Spear to get the third best. That's fine, these are definitely top five weapons in this game. That is perfectly okay. As long as the community made like somewhat the correct decision at the end, even though there's some questionable things they made along the way. That is okay. Men voted in the polls to see what the winner was. Even though I hadn't used the weapons. Oh, I see what you mean. I mean, you could just like click it, the option to vote, and just like click it again. Like, <laughs> to unvote. Just to see the options. But I get what you're saying. Anyway, that's that though.